So what's another step that Jesus will take in removing those who disrupt the peace? Well, let's look at another chapter in the same book, Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, and we're going to read starting at verse 19 right through to 21. We might mention before we start reading it that here it describes political organizations, kings and those who oppose Jesus and Jehovah God. And in a symbolic way, it refers to these as beasts, uh, as organizations that have disrupted the peace. Let's see what happens to them. And I saw the wild beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the one seated on the horse and against his army. Now that one is Jesus Christ. And the wild beast was caught, and along with it the false prophet that performed in front of it the signs uh, with which he misled those who received the mark of the wild beast and those who worship its image. While still alive, they both were hurled into the fiery lake that burns with sulfur. So what happens to these political organizations in opposition to Jehovah and Jesus? Again, we see the word hurled down into destruction. And what about the rest of mankind that opposes Jesus' rule? Well, let's look at verse 21. What does it say? But the rest were killed off with the long sword that proceeded out of the mouth of the one seated on the horse. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. Now that's a very interesting comment, isn't it? It helps us to see here that all those who oppose Jesus will be destroyed in the Battle of Armageddon. How charming. I'm sure all the kids in the audience will have really enjoyed that mental image of birds feasting on the flesh of God's enemies. We've been watching some of the concluding words of the final talk of the 2022 Pursue Peace Convention. This is governing body member Jeffrey Jackson delivering the talk, Universal Peace is Sure to Come. What can I say? Again, he's doing my work for me. He's showing that this is an organization that uses fear to control people. Because if you're in the audience watching this talk, you're thinking, well, I don't want to be among the people that get feasted on by birds. I want to be on the team that makes it through Armageddon. And what's most disgusting for me, apart from, again, this grotesque mental image being thrust at families with children, because Jeffrey Jackson is entitled to whatever deluded fantasies he wishes to entertain in his tiny brain. But indoctrinating children with this fear-mongering doomsday twaddle is something else entirely. What I find incredibly disingenuous about this talk is that he doesn't make clear who he means by those who oppose Jesus' rule. And what about the rest of mankind that opposes Jesus' rule? It helps us to see here that all those who oppose Jesus will be destroyed in the Battle of Armageddon. All those who oppose Jesus will be destroyed in the Battle of Armageddon. Don't you mean all those who aren't Jehovah's Witnesses, Jeffrey Jackson. I think that's what you really mean. But to make this talk more palatable, you're trying to insinuate that simply not opposing Jesus is enough to get you through Armageddon, which implies that when you see Armageddon unfolding and you see Jesus looking suspiciously like Kenny Rogers, <laughs> riding in the heavens, perhaps even then you might feel inclined to welcome him 
and not oppose him and maybe you'll make it through. This is the sort of loophole that you'll be searching for if you're in the audience thinking, well, I would never oppose Jesus riding in on the heavens with his bow and arrow. I wouldn't want to oppose him. He can do what he wants and then I'll make it through Armageddon. It's not that simple. And to drive this point home, I've alluded to this text earlier in the rebuttal, but maybe we should actually read it just to make it crystal clear, because I know there will be Jehovah's Witnesses commenting on this video saying, oh, how dare you say that we teach that all non-Jehovah's Witnesses will be killed. I refer you to the Watchtower of 2019, October this is from pages 11 and 12. We need to help people understand how important it is for them to take their stand for Jehovah and his kingdom. This means trying to motivate people to make the truth their own by applying what they learn, dedicating their life to Jehovah and getting baptized. Only then will they survive Jehovah's Day. It's right there in the publications. They don't say it all that often. They don't say it that clearly all that often, which allows many Jehovah's Witnesses to create this alternative version of the religion in their minds, which is more palatable, which says, oh, it's just about your heart condition. Again, that doesn't make sense if this is a warning work. The literature, every now and then, states it plainly that you have to be a Jehovah's Witness to make it through Armageddon, and yet disingenuously, because he is a charlatan and a shady huckster, who's out to deceive people, Jeffrey Jackson, rather than simply saying all non-Jehovah's Witnesses will be killed, he says all those who oppose Jesus' rule will be killed.